should you have sex on a first date? The big question. Well, I'm Jade Diamond. I'm a dating and love coach. I help purpose-driven women who are 35 plus to clear deep energetic love blocks so that they can triple their dating confidence, ignite their feminine power and naturally attract and keep their soulmate. Um, the question about sex comes up so much and there's so much conflict of opinion, you know, about sex on a first date sex in the first three dates or should you have a rule about when you have sex um it's a complex topic and some people get their feelings hurt and if you're here watching this video you're responsible for your own feelings regardless of what i say and i'm going to talk to you as i would a client okay i'm not going to talk to you as, as just on anybody i'm going to speak to you as if you're my one-to-one -one client and you're someone who's come to me because you want a long-term committed relationship, which is what most of the women in my world are looking for. You know, they want real deep soulmate work. And so, like it or lump it, whether it's politically correct or not, often, more often than not, and there's always an exception to every rule, when a woman has um, slept with a guy on a first date, let's say eight times out of ten, the progression of the connection doesn't go the way that they would prefer. And the reason for this is they often find themselves in kind of like a friends with benefits situation with the guy that they actually really like and that they want to be in a relationship with. Um, and there's a few different reasons for this. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. There are some people who... There are some people who literally meet and get married within 14 days and they're together for the, for the rest of their entire lives. So there's always stories like that. Um, but here's the thing about human nature, right? The thing about human nature is we don't tend to value what we haven't worked for regardless of how valuable the thing is. It's like being in a casino, right? So if you go into a casino with £10 and you win £1,000, let's say you win £2,000, okay, you're having a great night, you win £500, you're like, oh my God, this is brilliant. You put more money on the table, you win two grand, and you're like, this is awesome. And it's the beginning of the night. Like you went in, you walked in at nine, it's 10 o'clock, there's two grand in your pocket and you're like, this is fantastic. So you splash out on some cocktails and you spend the rest of the night playing with the money and by the end of the night, you go home with the £10 that you walked in with, probably less, like, you know, you lost all your money, but you had a great night, you had a great time, you bought cocktails, you had fun, you had money to play all night rather than just going to the table for a couple of hours, you know, you felt like you were in the movie casino and you had the time of your life. You go home, you don't cry about it. It feels like it was a good night, you had a good time. The end, you don't cry about the £2,000 that just went astray. However, if you were in a market where jobs were tight and you had just spent a month working overtime so that you could earn £2,000, and that £2,000 was paying your bills and was paying the debts that you owe. And you needed that money to, um, to live. You would feel very differently if you woke up one morning and that £2,000 was missing. If you got up every day at 6am and worked for it, if the next day it was missing, you would not be celebrating. Would you? You'd be pissed off and wondering, where is my money? And so I use this analogy just to give you an idea about the way that humans are in relation to what we earn, what we focus on, and what we value and what we want to keep. Now, this is nothing to do with a you know a woman's value lies in her sexuality because it doesn't it's about the kind of connection that you're trying to 
have with somebody. You just, if you want to go and have a good time, a great time, and if you hit it off and you keep seeing each other, great. And if you don't, great. Then you should absolutely just go and enjoy yourself. Here's the thing. Sometimes we can get so caught up in that we have to go a certain number of dates before sex and you know everyone's got different ideas and feelings about what works for them we can get so caught in our head that we're kind of missing the connection with the person in front of us and we're making it mean something about our value as a person you know and here's the thing a lot of women will say i don't mind if he doesn't call me back i don't mind if i don't see him again i don't mind you know if it's just a one night but the what I see over and over and over again is that many of the women in my community actually do mind. They do mind if there's no courtesy text. You know, casual sex doesn't have to be careless sex. But lots of people are careless about it. And, you know, once it's done, it's done. And that's at the end and it's, and it's on to the next. So the first thing for you to think about, about when to have sex is what is the value that you put into sex what does it mean to you and what do you truly desire if if for you and your background and who you are as a person it's like i'm only interested in sex after marriage you need to be really clear about that if you're only interested in sex after you've you know discussed that you're in a committed relationship and that you're exclusive then you need to have a conversation about that as you go on in the dating process if you're not that bothered and it doesn't matter to you and you're truly just, you know, happy with, with whatever happens. It doesn't matter if that person continues, you continue to date. Then you can have a conversation about that. But it really is about what works for you and not telling yourself little fibs that you feel okay with something when you don't. This is the biggest piece. And so often, and I'm not going to go into a lot of this now, we'll be here all day, but you know, sometimes women will find themselves kind of getting ahead of themselves. You know, they've met a guy that they really like, they're out on a date, they're in, they're in, they're in the energy of the moment, there's a sexual connection, and they presume that that means it's going to lead to more, and it doesn't. You know, sex and love are two different things, and it's wonderful when they come together. But many people view them as separate. So we can't presume that because you've had a sexual connection with someone that it means that, you know, as, as the women that I work with often have a lot of markers in their head. Okay, well, now we've done this, it means that. Now we've done this, it means that. Now I've met his friends, it means that. And, and no, this guy is still just getting to know you. And, and a sexual connection is part of getting to know someone and developing with someone and exploring with someone, right? So... You know, when you get give the chance to actually get to know someone before you have sex with them, you get to actually, and this is the main thing, you get to ascertain if you actually like this person, <laughs> if you actually like who they are as a human being. You know, because sometimes we find out afterwards they're not very nice, our values are not aligned, they're actually... You know, quite rude or quite obnoxious or quite self-obsessed and you might not find out that they're a selfish person until you get into bed with them and you don't want a selfish person in the bedroom whereas if you give it some time to get to know that person you can ask questions you can see how they are around other people you get to see like is this person that I vibe with and just like as a human and if it is great you know share that experience with them and just see it at for what it is it's an experience that you're sharing with this person and first and foremost it should be something that you're doing for yourself for your own desires your own needs never to impress never to be picked never because you think if i just sex them so good then they're going to forget everybody else that's just not how it works and it doesn't work repeatedly you will find it just doesn't work that way you know, man will fall in love with you through the connection of your heart and how he feels when he's around you. As a man, as a human, does he feel accepted by you? Does he feel like you're on the same page? Does he feel lit up 
by you. This is what will create connected relationship, not the sex. So that's my thoughts on that. I get really clear about what works for you and what doesn't. You can have the most incredible one night one night stands with the right person can be incredibly healing, incredibly activating, can bring you back home to yourself, to your body. But not if it's with someone who's just selfish in bed and is it's going to be two minutes and then and then snores, and then you know doesn't even bother to get you a taxi home. Nobody needs that kind of mess in their lives. So for that reason, um, I say tread tread carefully, tread carefully, and really tune into your true deepest desires when it comes to sex. If you would like to learn a little bit about sacred sexuality, I have a three-day program called The Commission. Um, it is in the comments. I'll leave that there for you and you can you can check that out and see if it's something you'd like to, to touch on.